What's up, Ruby Cheerish Modern fans? It's me again. I'm back. I literally took a day off from work uh, to watch Schmodown matches because I still, I'm still catching up on Schmodown matches that I've missed last week. I still haven't watched the free for all, just so, you, so, so you'll know. So yeah, I've got three matches now: Jessica Schloth versus Beth May, Jacoby Bancroft versus versus Jacob London, and Ben Goddard versus JTE. I'm gonna watch all three of them back to back to back. Right now, starting with Jessica Sloth versus Beth May, uh, which, as you can see, I'm re currently representing the Quirky Mercs because I don't have the Dens hoodie just yet. And even if I did, Beth May really liked the posters that I made a couple of weeks ago and posted on the, on the Facebook group. And she really liked uh, the Pokemon that I used uh, to represent her on the posters, which was uh, Gra which was Gremalon, which is a, a Pokemon th that I created myself an original design that I created for my fan region so yes I'm biased she liked a Pokemon that I created so yeah that's it in any case uh, this, is, this is gonna be a fun match to uh, rookies making their debut and uh, yeah it's the Dan versus uh, the Mercs uh, two of my favorite factions in the Schmodown so yeah I can't wait to see who comes out on top obviously I'm gonna participate but obviously I'm not gonna do as well as these two ladies uh, because I'm probably not even gonna get 10 questions right as per usual so let's just jump into the match and see how badly I do and how well these two girls are going to do so here we go he's back there I oh. guess <laughs> hey I'm here man Later! <laughs> well, look who decided to show up. Right when the sunlight touched the lake, like you said, man. I said later, not too late, which is what you are. But I... I, I but... I'm, that, I, but I'm here. Yeah, you're too that, late. What happened to when I tell you to be somewhere, you be there. Understood? You, what yeah. happened again? <laughs> Whoa. Lesson number what one. What happened to Mark? Don't be late. <laughs> you got it. Should I sit down for the rest of this? No, 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 no. no. you should have already been sitting down. When Lesson I... learned. There's no sit. Stand up. Stand up. Don't think about touching that chair. <laughs> Don't think about touching that microphone. You think you're gonna come in here and just and stand up hosting a schmo down <laughs> the pets? No. no. You start out sitting down. You start out doing everything I say, and you manage to screw those up. Don't sit down yet. Look, I'll be honest with you, man. I really don't think you have what it takes. I've got some cores in the car. Oh, you've been drinking. You want to drink beers with me? We drink beer in this house for three occasions only. When the Washington football team wins, when the Washington football team loses, or when the Washington football team is about to play a football game. Are those happening today? <laughs> the answer's no. no. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Pick it up some other time. Later, if ever. Later. Yeah. I'm not used to seeing this side Andrew. of the mark. Yeah? Get out. Dear Miss President. Oh. Everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Movie Trivia Schmodown. I'm Christian Harloff, joined as always by Mark Baby Carrots Ellis. Mark, this season already, man, we are just, uh, we're almost into May, but it has been fantastic. And one of the main reasons it's no. been so good is this new uh, crop of, of rookies and, and new talent coming in. And we continue on today with two new rookies with Jessica Schloth against Beth May. This is when we don't know anything about these two ladies. We don't know how good they might be at trivia, but we know that they both have uh, passion and they both have personality. So I don't know what to expect. How about you, partner? I would use the word highly touted, Christian, and that's not an adjective or is it an adverb that I would throw around lightly because these two factions, you have the Quirky Mercs and the Den, 
very excited about their draft, particularly because of, like you said, May and Schloth. And now they're going head-to-head as one rookie tries to get up on the other with a 1-0 and Sterling undefeated record. And like you hearken to, Christian, we've seen not just good performances from rookies. We've seen them barnstorm this entire league and put it on notice and say, I don't care who's at the top of the mountain right now. I may be starting right down here, but I know some Sherpas, and I got the fast track to get up there and possibly get myself a belt. Well, I mean, you look at already what the Finstock Exchange has done, and, and the, the, the majority of the lunatics on that faction seem to fit there. <laughs> Beth May seems like the, the place that she should lunatics. be was Quirky Mercs. It feels like Quirky Mercs were made for Beth May. When you see already with what she had already done before she was even drafted, she became a big personality in the Facebook group, posting uh, very similar to what Brother Lomas did. She was posting videos. She was po- and, and to be fair, I think she did it before Brother Lomas, and she was doing these videos. The fans were really responding. She got her name out there in, in the the Schmodown media and the after shows, and she was going out there and she was having all these conversations. And people were like, we really want to see Beth May. And I think that Koi, obviously, Koi was locked into all of those shows and he's like yeah that girl is about as quirky as quirky mercs get hence why she's on the team jessica sloth was was and is a hardcore fan of the movie trivia showdown she's already has a step on all a step up on all the competitors because she's a null so she already has good standings here so you better not say anything about her being a null because i'll kick you out of the room but she is a fan first and foremost we know that how is she a trivia is she any good? Her audition tape certainly showed that she, this is n- not just some girl who came in and said, I like the league. This is someone who says, no, I belong. I belong in the league. Put me here. And she was drafted by the Den Mother. You get no hate from Florida State here. I'm close personal friends with EJ Manuel. And as far as Swoth goes, yes, very excited to be here. But Christian, that's what we stress now is that it was just fun and games back when we started this thing light years ago. Right now, rookies are no longer just happy to be here. They're here to win. And I think you're going to see that bleed through, whether it's with correct movie trivia answers or whether it's with uh, crazy characters or whatever you have. You're going to see coaching, first of all, because we know how much Kate and Coy care about their faction and its competitors. But you're also going to see Megan Schloth, once it gets down to business, it ain't a joke. Well, we're about to get down to business right now. Are you ready, partner? I also call it Tallahassee Clown College, but it's just a little goof. Come on. She stole my heart with her insane videos, and I feel like the quirky part of the merch is just as important as the murky part of the quirk. Beth May, I'm really excited to have you at the merch. This is gonna get weird. 79? Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. I'm just here training for my match against Jess Sloan. It's me, Beth May of the Quirky Mercs. Kind of birthmark here, I think. Or was it something else? Hey, Kate. Oh, these gentle moments before a match where you know your rookie is going to come out on top of the other rookie. I'm going to go ahead and go with Jessica Schloetz. <laughs> Jess Schloetz here representing the Den led by our heroes leader, Kate Mulligan. You know, you've been a fan of Schmodown for several years now. Were you the Florida State sign girl at the Orlando (laughs) event? There is a history in the Schmodown of people who started out as fans who just went to live events and then became Schmodown competitors. I am ready to play my first match. It is still a shock. Do I have any words for my opponent? Uh, Jessica? I wish you the best, but you better watch out because I'm gonna... No, just kidding. I'm not a violent person. Unless... No, I'm really... I miss. How does one even begin to cut a promo for Beth May? The queen of the promo game. All of Beth's promos are so good. There's no real way to compete. So I'm gonna lie. I'm the mascot for the Quirky Marks. A real uh, titan of the showdown. K 
came into our lives here, and his name is Frankie Numbers. I knew it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Beth May is someone who bring, will bring a, a, an immense amount of passion to whatever she does, and certainly here in the movie trivia show now. Becky April, I know that you are attached to some higher up roommates of yours, but let me tell you something. You go up against Josh Sloth. Frankie can't save you now. So your working memory declines as you age. And so you being a young person, why you? She's is gonna cool. I just want to really say does. good luck. I hope you do well. I'm not well enough to beat me because I want to win, yeah. but I do wish you luck. Beth is as good at the Schmodown as she is at promos. Nobody's seen that yet. Close enough. <laughs> That's how you train, kids. What was it? The Godfather? Oh, I have cars too, not the Godfather. Oh. Quirky Mercs, you guys kind of need it, but the den has just been working really hard and we're hungry. All this match is going to come down to is who wants it more? And the answer is me. So all I have to say, Beth May, is may the best for keeping. Am I ready to compete? Hopefully. Am I ready to be a quirky merc? Absolutely. Probably. Am I ready to have fun? You yes. bet. 100% guaranteed. See you out there. Ugh. That's commitment! That's commitment! She's definitely on the right faction, that's for sure. Glad that clown college line was almost cut off by the promo, so thank you there, Eric. Mark? I'm hyped up. I'm ready to go. I'm excited watching the hype between these two rookies. Are you ready to get going? Who said clown? I didn't say clown college, but yes, let's go. Those well, Demon Deacon. Gentlemen, gentlemen, it's, it's time, time for, for the, the movie, movie trivia showdown. Intro. Introducing first. Representing the dead. Making. Her Schmodown debut, Jessica the Sleeper Slow. It's nice to see you there, Jessica. As I said before, you have a one up on everybody else here being a null. But look, I, I want to know, how did you discover the Schmodown? And wh at what point did you say, oh, this this is for me? This might be a bit. Um, I kind of just discovered it on ignorant, accident. But the YouTube algorithm no? gave me a video, and I just kind I, I, of I legitimately um, don't know. caught on from there and kept watching for years. And yeah, that's about it. Yeah, that pretty much puts you with the 90th percentile of how people find us totally <laughs> by accident. But now you're here, <laughs> Jess, and now you're me. about to start fielding questions in the movie trivia showdown. Where's the thermometer what's the temperature at how are your nerves feeling as you're about to enter your first match i mean it is kind of surreal because i feel like a little over a year ago i was in the crowd in atlanta watching dan and ben compete and now i'm here actually filming a match so it's crazy um so i am a little nervous but i'm excited uh, last question for you, Jess, before we bring in your opponent here. Speaking of your opponent, Beth May has made um, a an impact on the fan base already with, um, you know, her getting out there, getting her name out there. Have you learned? And But she doesn't have a lot of game tape as far as trivia goes. So, and I know it's being someone who's been watching this game, you know how the game works. You see, you've done the research, but is it strange going up against someone that you have no game tape of? And how, what do you know about Beth? Yeah, I mean, I guess the same could go for me and um, for her, but yeah, yeah uh, the den, like we work really hard. So everyone was trying to, you know, find what we could answer wise. Um, but yeah, it is kind of a mystery. So we'll see how this goes. All right. Thank you, Jess. We're going to just put you here as we await Beth May. 
and, and her, her opponent, opponent. Representing, representing the Quirky, quirky Mercs, Mercs, making her, her Schmodown debut. She is Beth the Maniac May! Hello. It's nice to see you, Bethel. As I've been mentioning, you have been making your presence known throughout the Schmodown computer, uh, community, and now you are with the Mercs. How's it been being with the Mercs? It's been fabulous. It's been quirky for the most part. Um, actually, for all of the parts, and I've been making myself known in the world at large for the 29 years I've been on Earth. It's been great. I'm happy to be here. Okay, and now you find yourself in the same position as Jess. You, you are a rookie who's about to answer your first questions in the schmodown. Are you nervous? Do you have Schmiel butterflies? Man. Are you trying to be like the great sports movie character Airbud and just handle the pressure and ultimately conquer it to victory? Air <laughs> uh, yeah, I think Airbud did well under pressure. I'm hoping to do a little better, but he's a really dog. Strategizing, uh, focusing on three key elements of the game. So first one oh, is uh, have his, fun, of course. Uh, right second next to her. rule I've been really uh, uh, cracking down on is uh, Air to Bud, have fun. Call me back? Uh, and then finally, the third one is also have fun and uh i think i'm ready to have fun let's get ready to have fun all right sounds like a fun time christian i guess you and i got to bring the uh the fun i guess that's on us too and we are ready to go mark what are the rules around number one <laughs> nothing says fun like rules in round number one the field of competition is going to have eight questions from eight different corners of movie trivia schmodown know-how each question is worth a point there's no penalty for missing a question there is no stealing at least not in round number one as soon as we ask the question you have about 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at the correct answer once we ask you by name or nickname please show what you wrote to your camera same time you verbalize your answer into the microphone we do not grade hard on penmanship or spelling in the slightest grammar 50 50. you each have three usages of the jte rule he is a guy from long ago jte now if you're not sure you heard a question right you want to buy yourself another 15 seconds to get that correct answer use a jte rule you also each have one challenge you may play at any time throughout the three round match if you think something's fishy with that question didn't like the answer the wording use a challenge we'll bring your manager in you may confer delineate and ultimately your manager will confirm and ratify if said challenge is taking place christian i, I think they knew the rules i think i just bored everybody that was that was not fun for the audience and i as a performer apologize not accepted. All right. So we yeah. will ask Beth, are you ready? I'm ready. Jess, are you ready? I'm ready. Then hey, let's, let's get, get ready, ready to, to Schmodown. Schmodown. Round number one. Question number one. We're going to start with new releases. Who stars as a dog owner named John Thornton in the 2020 adventure film The Call of the Wild? You said a uh, dog owner or dog stepfather? Nice. I like what you're doing there. Self-plugging, but just not realizing the self-plug. It's yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Five. Not sure four, I spelled his name right, but three. Gotta make a living. Two. Of course. One. Pens down, Beth. Harrison, Harrison Ford? Ford. Yes. And Jess. Okay, so one S. Okay. Harrison right. Ford. Tie game as we get to our Harrison second Ford. question here, Mark. Did he wear the earring while he was in the I did a ride? Your next question is in the world of fantasy science fiction. Speedy. And here it is for a point. Which actor appears in the sci-fi films Aliens, Predator 2, The Terminator, and Edge of Tomorrow? Whew, that's a good resume. You care to take a crack at ranking those movies amongst your favorites? Yeah, sure. I'll be able to do that in three seconds. You love Terminator. I know that. I do. First one, five. I have second one, two, four, three, I think two, I got it. one. Pens down, please, and Jess. Bill, Bill Paxton? Paxton? Yes, and Beth. Bill Paxton? Tie Best game, 2-2. Two, two. Good start here, and, and we get to question number three. One point. Movie Just quotes. Point that out. In which 90s film does Tom Cruise say the line, help me, help you? think uh, these two rookies need any help christian you know it's always interesting once you get that first answer under your belt you just you tend to relax and i think we're watching that play out 
Good start so far for both May and Schloth. As five, four, three, two, one. Hands down, Beth. Jerry Maguire? Jerry Maguire? Yes. And I just, actually wrote Jerry Maguire. Jerry Mag Tie game. Maguire. Good start here on but for both competitors. It's I mean, question I number four. I knew the answer, but... The human head weighs. Who cares? Your next question is in the world of romance or roms. For a point, which Game of Thrones actress stars as a young woman who falls for a paralyzed man in the 2016 film Me Before You? is how Christian conducts his life in reference to me. Him, then you. Oops. Accurate. Five, <laughs> five, four, four, three. Can you repeat? Yes, first one. Thank you. All right. Here it is in the world of romance. Which Game of Thrones actress stars as a young woman who falls for a paralyzed man in the 2016 film Me Before You? I actually looked at the question before they finish reading it i need to learn to stop doing that i've been getting better at it but sometimes those movies just slip through the cracks i don't know if i saw this one you did and i can tell you five four three two one hands down hands up please and we start with jess mm -hmm. i mean it was Khaleesi, but i couldn't remember her name and well, Beth, you got, you got is the, it right. the dragon from Game of Thrones. <laughs> so both yeah. miss is Amelia Clark. <laughs> well, yeah. Amelia Clark, they were both what we were looking for, or would have accepted eyebrows. So either one of those. <laughs> um, here is the eyebrows. next question. Here, both missing that one. This is question five. Eighties films. William Zabka plays Johnny Lawrence in which nineteen eighty four film? We. Oui. I'm going to challenge you, Christian. I don't think I saw me before you. Uh, I think you might be right. I was thinking of something. I was thinking of Surviving Christmas. Not Surviving Christmas. The other Christmas movie she was in. Five. Last Christmas. Matter. Four. We don't review anymore. Three. Two. I hate when you drink. One. <laughs> Pants down, please. And we start with that. Is it The Goonies? Karate Kid. It is not. And Jess? The Karate Kid? Yes. Karate Kid it is, and just takes Kai, the and lead here, 4-3, 4-3, and... as we get to the next question. This is question six. That's right. This may be a little more modern of a question, and it's in the category of comedies. <laughs> Fair enough. And your question. What wrestler plays the sports-minded dad Mitchell Manns in the 2018 comedy Blockers? No, I did see this one with you. We had a good time. And five. Did you four, really see him though? Three, two, one. Pens down, please. Pens down, please. And we start with Jess. John, John Cena. Cena! Yes. And, uh, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. So Jess going up here now. Five three, I believe. Right? Five three. Five mm -hmm. three. Five three. All right. Here we go. Next question. I'm actually perfect this Horror round so far. Thriller. I think. Horror thriller. Which actress stars as an art gallery owner named Susan Morrow in the 2016 thriller Nocturnal Animals? Had to jinx it, didn't I? Damn it. It's kind of what I am Damn until uh, until this whole thing. I was a nocturnal animal. And five. Christian four, used to be. Three. Or two, one. Well, daylight savings. Time. And pens down, please. And we start with Beth. Amy, Amy Adams? Adams? Yes. Jess. Whoa! <laughs> Amy Adams. Okay. So myself. now we see ourselves 6-4. Six, 6-4. Four, six, four. Six, four, as we get to our next question mark. What do we got? That's right. It's in the category of the 1990s. I was More specifically, then, the movies that, that were made in the 90s. And here's the question for a point. Who stars in the 1990s action thriller Cliffhanger about a Fortin Ma Mountain rescuer pitted against a group of criminals who've lost their hundred million dollars? <laughs> the I VHS jacket the sells itself, I've Christian. I've never seen it. Oh, and I feel the same way about you. Five, four, let's just sit in it. Three, two, one. Pens down, please. Pens down, please. And we start with 
Jess. Kevin Costner. Mm-hmm. Kurt Russell. Incorrect. And Beth. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm, both great guesses. They've been in movies with this gentleman. His name is Sylvester Stallone, and he should have had an Oscar. Yeah. All right. So at the end of round number one, we find ourselves with a score of 6 4. 6 4. Schultz with a two point lead over the Maniac I'm as we get to round number them, two. To Mark, how's it go? Never going to forgive Mark Rylance for stealing it. In round number myself. two, it's the wheel round the wheel of fate, doom, and justice. No physical wheel will be provided because. For better or for worse, we don't know where anyone lives, so it's a virtual wheel. You're going to use your mind to spin it. Once you settle on a category, you're going to hear four questions from that particular realm of movie trivia, schmodown, know-how. Each question's worth two points. There's no penalty for missing a question. However, stealing, yep, it's available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us for multiple choice. We gave you four options, one of which we're told is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one. And you still have all your JTE rules that you maintain from round one. You have your challenge. And it is a two-point advantage currently for Jess Schloth. So, Jess, it's up to you. Do you want to spin first or defer to your headband opponent? Let's defer. Well, I've watched many people have to make this decision before, so I am going to defer. All right, Corey, you got 60 seconds to Hi, talk guys. to Beth starting now. Hi. Hey, what's up? Talk to me, Koi. So we talked about this exact scenario today. This is exactly where we wanted to be. You are only two points behind, which means one question in this round ties us up, and then you just Mm. own the rest. Uh, I personally like going first in this, so I'm happy she deferred. How do you feel right now? How's your headspace? I just like going, you know, and I'm ready to go. So let's do that. I think that the wheel as as a concept is super fun. I'm ready to have fun. It's it's a wheel. It's always circular. It's always, it's always going. Spinning. Let's always go. Let's do. That let's hope the thing. fortune falls in my favor. It's about to. It's about to. Okay, let's get that wheel up. Right, the wheel is up, and Beth will get the first spin here, and here it is. And remember, you have two JTEs if you need them. Uh, okay, Christian, you want to give them each an extra point because they knew it was Khaleesi slash the person that rides dragons. Just to correct, Koi. That is bonus choice. Correct you, I hope that she makes a great choice. Yeah, and to, and just to correct your manager, you have three JTs left. Schloth has two. Oh, thank you. All right, 60 seconds to decide what you want to give her here, Kate, starting now. Okay. It's funny, we also talked about this scenario today. <laughs> I think we were aiming higher. Um, what do you think about what do you think about uh what we talked about earlier? What what's uh, what's sticking out for you? What's what do, what let, honestly what do we want off the wheel too? <laughs> yeah. Um, we had talked about going with something super broad. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think something like movie release dates, would you be, would you be sad to see that go? Oh, um, a little sad maybe, but I think we should go with that one. (laughs) Okay. Let's go movie release dates. Yeah. All right. Let's go. All right. Movie release dates. It is. You're going to get four questions in the realm of movie release dates. Beth, are you ready? I hope so. Let's go. Right, here you go. Here's the first one. What year saw the release of Kill Bill Volume 2? 2003? The first one's 2002. Five. Four. 2003? Is incorrect. So, okay, Jess, okay. we're going to give you the now, question again. So Here it is. I answered 2003. Which year saw the release of Kill Bill now I'm Volume more 2? I'm certain that the first one was 2003 and the second uh, one was 2004. 2004. That is correct for a two point steal. Ooh, that's a big one. Big I, steal. I All right, here is the second question. To know that, but I still knew the Adam Sandler comedy Big Daddy came out in which year of the 1990s? Multiple choice, please. Is it A, 1997, B, 1998, C, 1999, D, 1996? Okay, I'm glad you went for multiple choice. I think it's 1998. 
I just wasn't sure if it was 1998. Letter. Correct. And given the opportunity here, yes, the Adam Sandler comedy it. Big Daddy came out in which year of the 1990s? Is it A, 1997, B, 1998, C, 1999, D, 1996? I'm going to say 1999. Correct for one more point. That is another steal so far. And here is question three here, Beth. The horror classic The Exorcist came out on December 26th of which year? 1973. Five. Four. 1971. Is incorrect. So just for the steal, the horror classic, The Exorcist, came that. out on December 26th of which year? 1974? And for 1973. 1973. Told you. All right. So final question. Final question here for F. Here is the question. All right. What year saw the release of Shutter Island? Five. Two thousand ten. That's correct for two points. Good two job. point. There. Big get. Big, Big get. get. Yeah. Christian, you needed that one. Two massive steals there by Jess, but Beth able to stick uh, two points there at the end. And Kate, you got 60 seconds. Okay. So it's it, it, you're in the pocket. Just stay in the pocket. There's nothing I, I can tell you at this point. The wheel, she could, you know, we could spin opponent's choice right now and she could give us something that would be equally as hard. But just something for you to know for your own confidence sake. Look what you did on that category that we did not think you would be good at. You got two, you got two steals on that. And I don't know if you would have had to go to multiple or not, but that just, just let that build your confidence because I feel like first round's done. Your first round in Shimo Down's done. You're on to your second. You're in, you're going at a pace where you're going to be playing more matches Kate here. Is such a so good just stay in the pocket, season. stay focused, and get confident, sister. Just because you're <laughs> a sleeper doesn't mean you're asleep. Wait. Okay, let's wake this party up. Let's do it. Okay. And here's the, here's the thing. Chris, I think we can safely say for all the Beth May fans out there that uh, you and I got saddled with movie release dates one time, and yeah, it was even tougher than what she just went through. So we're with you. Kate called you it. Is there a choice? Uh, well, well, you're unfazed. Congratulations, you're a prophet. Right, 60 wow. seconds here. Okay, well, bad luck for both of us, or good luck, good luck when you look at opportunities. Uh, so let's see. What are your ideas here, Koi? So uh, obviously it's a tricky lack of game tape for it, all parties involved. We can narrow it yeah. down. Uh, what jumps out to you? I don't think... Go ahead. What are your thoughts? When I think about things that are nobody's friend, I think about war. I think of war as being like, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. A waste of money. Season. That's what. But this season is killing the mercs, so I feel like war is a negative to us, especially. So I think that might be good. And she is on the younger side, and we've only been at war with uh, wealth disparity since and she's sorry. alive. So I think war. I agree with your instinct. All right, let's go with war. All right. So, Jess, you are back. Your opponent has chosen the category of war films for you. Mark, four questions in the realm of war films. In the category of war films, one still remembers Ooh. Jason Inman's great comeback to Snyder about war films. And now yeah. it's up to Jess I remember Schloth that. for four questions. Each one's worth two points. Let's need multiple in choice. War. Your two first question in the category of war movies. What classic war film won seven Oscars, including, but not limited to, Best Actor, Best Original Screenplay, and Best Director? Original classic. Mm. Um, I'll go multiple choice. All right, your four options for a point. Yeah, I need to Is it A, All options. Quiet on the Western Front? B, Where Eagles Dare. C, Sands of Iwo Jima, or D, Patton. I think it's all quiet on the Western Front. At some point I would have gone... I'll go D. 
Can you D? D you is said, in dog. D is in dog. Is correct for a point. It was patent. George C. Scott, so good. And your next question. Category of war. The 2006 movie Flyboys follows the escapades of volunteer American aviators during which war? There's a lot of good wars to choose from. <laughs> um, I'll go multiple choice on this as well. All right, your four options. Is it A, the Vietnam War, B, World War II, C, World War I, or D, the Iraq War? World War II makes the most sense to me because of how the question was worded. World War II? World War II is incorrect. So okay. for one point, well, Steve, it's not World War Beth will give you the question and your options once again. The 2006 no, movie Flyboys follows the escapades of volunteer tanks. American aviators during which war? Is it A, Vietnam, B, World War II, C, World War I, or D, the Iraq War? I don't think it's the Iraq War. Uh, I think it's how about World War One? Well, how about a point? That is correct, and that's a really? big steal, Christian. May exacting really? a measure of revenge against Sloth, but Sloth still has two questions left. All right, here's huh. the next one. And this is your yeah. penultimate war question for two points. Okay, I, I thought they Who directed Black Hawk I Down? Uh, oh, uh, Black. Um, oh, she, she, what's her name? She she direct. She also did Point Break, I think. It's a full choice. Okay, your four options for a point. Is it A. Tony Scott, B. Robert Zemeckis, C. Ridley Scott, or D. Terrence Malick? Okay, I was thinking of a different one. Wait, wait, wait. Um, I think it might be Tony Scott. Well, I'm terrible. As someone who's actually Five, been in, in a war, four, I'm terrible at war movies. Three. C is in Cat. C is in Cat is Ridley Scott, and that is correct for a point, and he did oh, a darn man. fine job, I might add. So now, I Christian, we see ourselves that. with a four-point lead for Jess Schloth. She can make that six points if she gets this question right off the bat, but that steal opportunity always looming large in an opponent's choice category. So, Jess, your final question in the war category who played Whoa. First Lieutenant Rafe McCauley in 2001's Pearl Harbor? Can we get hands up on both the competitors, please? Uh, was it Ben Affleck or was it the other guy? Multiple choice. Just All right, your four, your four options. Is it A, Ben Affleck, B, Jude Law, C, Josh Hartnett, or D, Brendan Fraser? I'm going with my original one. Ben Affleck, my original answer. Gonna go Josh Hartnett. Josh Hartnett is incorrect. So for one more steal opportunity, we pivot to Beth May. Beth, your question and your options. Who played for Lieutenant Rafe McCauley in 2001's Pearl Harbor? And your multiple choice options. Is it A, Ben Affleck, B, Jude Law, C, Josh Hartnett, or D, Brendan Fraser? Let's go Ben Affleck. You'd be correct for a point if you did it. She did, and Christian. And so it is now 11 points. to 8. And all of I a sudden, home, multiple waiter. choice, opponent's choice being <laughs> thrown into the big Vitamix here with these two rookie sensations. And it's a three-point ball game heading into round three. This is exactly right. As I it looked it like because me. of the first opponent's choice that Beth hit, like, oh, my God, is this going to be over before it started? And look what happened. Opponent's choice on the other side, and we see ourselves with a three-point game going into round number three. Mark, what are the rules of round number three? That's my job to tell you. In round number three, each competitor has a job to do. Well, we just need three numbers from each of you. These numbers may range from one to 20. Like I said, we need three of them. They may not be the same numbers as your opponent because that corresponds to a unique category, movie trivia, schmodown, know-how, and we don't have the wherewithal or the... Anyway, your first question's worth two points. Your next one's worth three points. Your final question is worth five big points. There's no penalty for missing a question in round number three. There is also no stealing in round number three. Christian, this is exciting, and it is still up to Schloth to give us her three lucky numbers first. So, Jess, from one to 20... What feels fortunate? Um, three. Nine. Nine? Twelve. Three, nine, and twelve for Jess and for Beth. Uh, let's go with uh, one, two, 
and four. One, two, and four, and I'm assuming oh. that because three was gone. 60 seconds, starting now. Worst case scenario wasn't so bad, was it? You, yeah, you yeah. muddled through yeah. this. Yeah. Listen, we were That's scared of those good. two wheel slices, and, and you were going <laughs> fine on both of those. Come on now. Give yourself some credit here. So listen, this three points, This you could close this out, but also it could just keep going, okay? Because she, she just has to answer a few, and she's back right with you. So stay focused. Take your time. You still have two JTEs left. OK, so it, even if it, 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 even if it's the three pointer and you want more time, just don't don't there's no points for leaving a game with JTEs. Leave them all on the table if you need to. All right. You're doing great. You're looking good. Uh, first game almost over. So excited. <laughs> all, right. all right, Koi, 60 seconds. Such good work. You stayed in the zone. You got a bunch of great steals. It looked dicey for a minute and you were right there. You didn't let it affect you incredible work staying quirky and murky and we found out what war was good for it was catching up which is i think what we use it for how are you feeling i'm i'm feeling good i'm feeling like you know a stoic underdog going into the third round here but i'm hoping i this can pull out something way fun in round three well we also we do I, since i learned to count recently three jtes means we've got some comfort as you need to think <laughs> things over so far you've done a really good job acknowledging like hey i know this making sure you hear the question and diving in Keep that up. You did a great job up at the first round. I saw you wanted to dive into the dragon and, and you almost had it. So like do that with this third round. We don't know what those okay. numbers are going to be, but I feel really confident you're killing it. Thanks, bud. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's win this thing. All right. Our competitors are back. And now we are going to start with Beth, who is trying to avoid the TKO here. And she started with number one. Number one, and that is going to be in the category of crime films. Crime films. Crime films. All right, here you go. Okay. Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre appeared alongside Denzel Washington in which 2000s crime drama? Five. Repeat the question, please. Pass. First one. Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre appeared alongside Denzel Washington in what 2000s crime drama? Denzel Washington. Yay! Yay! Training day? That's correct. For two points. So two points. That's big. She's trying to avoid the TKO. If she hits this yep. here, it'll bounce back to Jess. All right, Beth. So for your second category, your three-pointer, you chose category two. That would be sports, sports films, sports films for the three-point question. All right. Here you go. Who stars as an underachieving gambler who ends up coaching a little league team in 2001's Hardball? Me no speak sports. Me no speak sports. Error, error. Five. Is it Charlie Sheen? Looking for Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves. All right. So here's where we are. We are going to get the five-point question for Beth. If she hits it, bounces back to Jess. However, if she misses it, the Den will win via TKO, and the Mercs will get a negative one. And here is the question. Tom Cruise for Category 4. Tom Cruise, here is the question. Which famous actor directed the political drama Lions for Lambs and also co-starred with Tom Cruise in the film? Robert Redford. For five points. Wow. And it takes it back on over. Awesome. So it's now 15-11. No so Jessica Solt will have to try to win the game and here where the TKO is avoided. And sold. now, Jess, you are going to get three questions. And the first one, Mark, was category three. It's popular number probably because of Mark Mosley's 1982 NFL MVP campaign. And today it corresponds to the category of biopics. All right, Jess, for two points, your question. Who plays J. Edgar Hoover in 2011's J. Edgar? Leonardo DiCaprio? I 
think it Leonardo was Leonardo DiCaprio. In a really funny Halloween mask, that is correct for two points. And all of a sudden, just like that, it is a two-point ball game, meaning that if Jess Schloth can hit either her three-point question or her five-point question, she's going to walk away with the win here. If not, Beth May takes her first W in the Schmodown, Christian. All right, so we are going to get this three-pointer, and as Mark said, if she hits it, the game's over. If not, she'll have the five-pointer to try to win it. Mark, here's the three. All right, and that was category numero nine, I believe. Numero yes, Matt? nueve. It's in the world, I think, yeah. of Brad Pitt. More specifically, his movies and Brad Pitt movies for the win. Who plays Susan Parrish, a resident in internal medicine and Pitt's love interest in the film Meet Joe Black? Meet Black Joe. Five, four, three, two. Julia Roberts. <laughs> Looking for Claire Forlani. All right. So where we are now. So Jess has an opportunity to win the game should she hit this question. However, if she misses, then Beth May will win the match. All right, Mark, she chose category 12. She did, Christian, and that could be any number of things. We have a lot of categories to choose from, but today, the number 12, Jim Kelly's number, corresponds to animated films. Movies drawn by hand or on a computer, some stop motion. Jess, your question for your first Schmodown victory. This 1998 DreamWorks film won the Best Original Song Oscar for the song When You Believe. The Prince of Egypt. There can be miracles when you believe. Prince of Egypt. And your winner, Jessica, Jessica the Sleeper! Sloth! Sloth does it in dramatic, dramatic fashion here. Holy mackerel, what an ending to that match. Kate is losing. Kate's losing it there. Are you going to cry? <laughs> no, it's not going to cry. I'm going to poop my pants. Well, that is something because, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. What an incredible, incredible match it was. All right. So we're going to keep you guys here. We don't have uh, Jen or uh, Steph today, but we will be asking you guys questions here. So uh, I guess we can start off with you, Jess. Like, you know, this was a match. This is a tough one. This is a tough one. You had yeah. uh, you had the lead. It looked like it could. You were set up before that opponent's choice on your end for potential a knockout. And then it turns back to where you had you're pushed to your five. Do you feel you, you earn your stripes here in your first match? Yeah, I honestly was unsure of how this was going to go, but I'm very happy now. Relieved. Got my five-pointer right. <laughs> and it was a big five-point answer. So, Kate, let me pivot over to you as the manager of Jess Schloth and as someone who before and apparently today has had the Schmodown force various bodily functions. I'm how here. proud are you of your new competitor and possibly star in the den. I couldn't be prouder. And I'll tell you what, this is that both of these women were handed opponent's choice on their first match out. It feels like rookies shouldn't have opponent's choice on the wheel. Take that note, will you, Christian? So <laughs> just write it down. I just think rookies shouldn't have to deal with it. But no, to me, it's like, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear, stupid. Uh, well, yeah, that's fine. But you should get your microphone working. Talking to Grace. Yeah. Well, she got up and pulled all the. Uh, no. Turn. Oh, push your mic. Okay. Can you hear me better now? No. You're using your computer audio. Okay. Yeah. I think we'll all live. Probably, it's probably is because this, this is it, unplugged. Is this good That's content? All right. So, Mark, content? next question, and we're leaving all of that in. All right, then. We'll just pivot right back to Jess. So, Jess, now that you have your, your first victory in the Schmodown, and you start 
dreaming a little bit. You start saying, oh, who do I want to take on? Is there any competitor out there or maybe any faction out there that you say, okay, I want a piece of them next? Oh, man. No, I'm just excited to play. I will take whatever, you know, I'm excited for just what comes next. Next. But you're a stone cold killer, right? You're, you're stone cold. You're locked in. You'll own the sleep and then you just boom, five pointer crush him, right? Exactly. <laughs> okay, I will all jokes aside here. I mean, you got to be obviously you you have gotten so attached to your players and you've really been working with them. So to see one of your players kind of go through this and watching it, what's it feel like on the sidelines watching saying, "Oh my god, we're almost there," but it could it, it could have went the other way. I just I, I feel like speaking that even though it might feel negative, I hope you didn't feel like I was being negative to you, Jess, but like that is the sort of thing that you have to be braced like you can be leading the whole game and it just comes down to the five pointer. And today it came down to the five pointer and the number of times that that has gone our way then versus the number of times that hasn't it's it's even at this point. So to me, I was like, oh, wow, this really this is about and then I heard what the category was. I'm like, OK, this if we have a chance. And then I heard what the question was. I'm like, OK, if she has a chance and I'll be honest, I didn't know the answer, but I was glad that I heard and you're because that was the only way I would know if you got it right. <laughs> Well, congratulations to you. both you, Kate, and, you. And, and good debut here. And they don't call it a sleeper for nothing because come back, a sleeper hit, it seems to be, with yeah. Jessica Sloth and The Den. Congratulations, Jess. Congratulations, Kate. And we'll talk Thank to you. Again. Don't sleep on Jess. And we are back with both Koi and Beth. Beth, it's one of those things. I mean, look, like it was mentioned, the the two opponents' choice, as you said, it looks like it was either bad luck for both or it turned out to actually be good luck for you, as you had mentioned, because it kept you in the fight. It kept you in the whole entire time, and then you were able to hit that big five-pointer at the end. Did you think she was going to get that five, and were you kind of crossing your fingers and, uh, you know, hoping that uh, it would go the other way? Um, I, you know, I was crossing my fingers that maybe I, I would win ultimately, but obviously I'm, I'm hoping that she gets it right because uh, I wish the best for her. And that's a great movie. I, I, I love Prince of Egypt, and there were quite a good few, many uh, animated movies coming out in 1998, but that was the one that I believed in, and clearly so did she, so good on her for getting it. Um, you know, ultimately, when it comes down to it, as Morgan Freeman says in Million Dollar Baby, anyone can you can lose one fight, you know? Sure, well, cool. I would get yeah. concerned if I keep losing, but <laughs> <laughs> anybody can anybody can lose one fight. That's a fair point. And, and, and it is just that one match, Coy. And, and I think that there's a lot of silver linings to take out of this from a managerial perspective. I mean, you look at how tough of a blow that was to have opponent's choice in movie release dates. How proud are you of your competitor that she was able to, to show that much backbone to bounce right back up and get some steals herself and go into round three and get the lead ultimately for a brief time? She faced so many worst case scenarios. She got opponent's choice. She was in an almost TKO, it was in a TKO situation. She went into the last match knowing she needed to go all the way to push someone to their five and then did. It was all of the, oh no, this is the worst thing that can happen. And that was a debut. So for me, it was one rookie debut had to lose today. I feel like as far as losses go, this was the best way to lose because I saw that she could handle the pressure. I saw that she could get a five pointer. I don't get five pointers. That's why I don't play. This, all of this was a, a tour de force of losing with honor. I'm, I'm very proud. This is why she's the maniac. I'm very excited to put her back in. I'm very excited to see what she can do when we don't get opponent's choice. And, and I was just proud the whole time. And it was so exhausting. That was such an exhausting match. Like, I stayed I'm tired. sweaty. I should have drank more water. <laughs> well, that's what I'm, well, that's what I was saying, Koi. I mean, you've been in a, a little... It was a tough start, obviously. But, like, when you had um, a negative one at one point in the season, you know? And so let me ask you a question. You know, were you like, uh-oh, we're going to get another... Ne and at one point, it looked like it could be negative one plus one. But then she fought out of that KO, right? And then it's like, okay, uh-oh, she missed the three. Now we could get another negative one here and she fights out of that. So as you said, you know, it was it's gotta be you gotta have that proud papa moment of of okay, here here we have uh one of my players coming in here and fights out of that that two time hole that as she was in. The negative one loomed throughout the match after round one, and it got more serious. So she was able to shake that off, stay focused. Since I wasn't on camera, I was able to panic. I was able to be over here going like, oh, we just got out of that, and I can't, like, 
the pressure of the Facebook group weighed <laughs> heavily on me. Uh, and, and it's just, I didn't, I'm so glad that she didn't need me in those moments because I would have been a horrible manager acknowledging that I was thinking negative one as much as I was, but at no point did it vex her. And that's why I was so impressed. She stayed in the zone and, you know, it is a very different season. The option of losing a point as the Mercs learned in the worst way is a different tactic in these fights. In, in these matches, you really have to be aware that it's not just about gaining points. There is an actual fear element going into the third round that wasn't there before. So she didn't have that, which is why I'm excited to see her play again. I mean, I always think that what's quirkier than losing a point? You know, it's not what people are expecting. It's kind of like, oh. <laughs> We're historic. First yeah. of all time, no one can take that from us. Even if people get negative one next year and years forward, we're the first to do it. And that you is... That's true. That was... Forever. Well, congrats. Buy quirky Merc clothes. Be the first negative one in history. That's how it's done. Well, you don't have to do one. it anymore because it certainly didn't happen today. So, uh, again, congratulations on a very, very well-fought... Uh, battle here at Bath. We're looking forward to seeing you again. Thank you, and thank you to you, Koi, and we'll see you guys really soon. Yep. All right, Mark. So, what a match it was because it looked like it was going one way. It looked like it was going to go another way, and it didn't go either one of those ways. It was a hard fought battle all the way up until the end with the final score being Jess, the sleeper sloth, taking the victory over the Maniac 18-15 unbelievable so far and as koi said you should absolutely get that merch if you're a quirky mercs fan you should get that merch if you're a den fan get the den merch because when you get some of those fa that faction merch a percentage of those profits goes to the pool that the factions will play for at the end of the year so make sure that you do that that's how you support all of these mental athletes that are going into putting the time and the effort and really uh really putting it all on the line here for you guys the fans so just something to look forward to and another thing to look forward to mark it's coming up the free for all the fourth free for all we've ever done 40 competitors all competing you don't know who's coming in five people start at the table lowest amount of points gets eliminated all the way the people keep coming in until there's only one person standing that person will get a shot at any title in any division of their choosing and the mvp as stated by our president grace hancock all right mark so great match it was but really really fun match what'd you think I gave you a lot to chew on there. First of all, wow. I mean, I, I think Beth May said it best at the top of the show. It's just the, the goal is to have fun. And while you and I thoroughly had a blast this whole time, what a stressful pressure cooker for two competitors to make their debut. But when you talk about the faction and, and which one might be at the top of the heap when it's all said and done after this year's epic spectacular in December, you could be looking at them, and both factions had a lot of confidence putting forth these new competitors in this match. And while only one came out with the W, they both proved that they're ready for the challenge and that they can indeed go the distance. Yeah, it was really good to see. They both, and, and it's, you said it earlier though, Mark, it, we're, we're coming, we're a different type of competitor in this season. People who are familiar with the game, people who understand what the what it is, and it's not just, back in the day, it was, oh, oh wait, we, we guys were playing, oh yeah, sure, I'll play into some questions. They know the stakes now. They know the game now. They know what to do, and you could see it because both Beth and Jess didn't get shook after that opponent's choice on both their end they both stayed in there they both hit their five when it was necessary it was a really really it was a telling telling match of what this rookie class is all about and i think both koi and uh kate and jess and beth should be proud of this performance today because it was really uh, it was fun to watch uh rookies no more and they never appeared to be rookies when it comes to how to play the game maneuvering your way around whether it's the wheel and dealing with opponent's choice utilizing your jte rules having that challenge in your back pocket they played like pros they are in the big leagues now and proved why with this match today christian hell we were the only time that we had to take an edit and that was because you just took a huge bite of your jersey mike sub we're not sponsored by them yet, but what I will say tomorrow, everybody, big matches coming up tomorrow and the next day. You got Bancroft from the stars. Jacoby Bancroft, the deal breaker, is going up against the Aussie Jacob Blunden. That happens tomorrow. And a reminder, it is on Saturday, not Friday, Saturday, the free-for-all on April 24th, 40 competitors, the schmodownlive.com, or if you're a $10 patron, you'll get it now. All right, everybody, so for myself and Mark Ellis, 
Thank you to everybody involved here today. We appreciate it. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay, so I got myself some 12 points, which I'm very happy and excited about because this is usually my my points at the end of an Inner Geekdom or Star Wars match. Uh, more so Inner Geekdom than Star Wars lately, but yeah, you get my point. I, I did very well in this um, in this match, and uh, yeah, I'm proud of it. Now, as far as the match itself, tough break for both of these competitors. Um, you know, um, yeah, getting opponent's choice, your debut match, not the best. When both of them get it, I mean, it's just, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but yeah, that's one hell of a way to start your uh, Shmodan career, opponent's choice on both sides, but I think both competitors have managed to navigate it perfectly, just the way uh, you would have hoped anyone uh, would navigate a tough situation like that. And uh, yeah, c congratulations to the victory, to the victor Jessica Schloff, and uh, my condolences to the uh, unfortunate loser, Beth May. Uh, yeah, it's, it's only for her first match. Like, like she said, everyone can lose a, a fight once. I'm pretty sure if she is, she's gonna come back stronger than ever in the next one. And uh, yeah, what a way to win on a Prince of Egypt question. I just love it. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but the cats are fighting outside. So let me just go uh, see what that is, and I'll see you all in the next match. So, see you then, everybody. Schmodown! Hello again, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed this video, because I really enjoyed making it. So, if you like what you've seen here, please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more awesome content like this. So, until next time, guys, I'll see you guys next time.